Hi, everyone. Welcome to the fourth and final webinar conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming operational case study examinations happening in November 2022. My name is Nick, and I'm the lead tutor and evaluator for OCS at TCS. So let's look at the session outcomes for tonight. So uh, first things first, I'm going to take you through the uh, examiner's comments because, uh, you know, throughout uh, these uh, um, you know, the series of webinars which we've conducted from webinar number one up until the third one, I've uh, highlighted uh, what the examiner, the CMA examiner expects out of you. And I'm going to reiterate these points um, in a much more uh, uh, concise and a precise manner in tonight's session. And uh, uh, in the second part, I'll be talking about how you are supposed to, uh, or what you are supposed to do when it comes to developing confidence. And on top of that, I'll uh, also highlight how to maintain the same level of confidence at the real exam, because uh, as per the CMA examiner, confident students have uh, uh, a good um, chance of passing the exam. So you need to, uh, you know, develop a positive mindset, a positive attitude before the exam. And on top of that, you have to maintain the same type of uh, uh, positivity at the real exam as well. And in the third part, I'll be talking, uh, oops, I've, I've done a mistake in here. I've already covered this in the uh, third webinar, you know. Um, I'm sorry about this. I, I won't be covering this area because this was already covered. And uh, looking at uh, the webinars which we have had um, uh, from the 17th up until now. So today uh, we are doing the last webinar, exam prep. And if by any chance, uh, if you are watching the recorded version of this video, and if you had missed out on the first three videos, it's of utmost importance that you watch them. Um, so I invite you guys to uh, go watch them on your student portal if you have already purchased a product, or else uh, uh, you can access the recorded versions of these webinars, all four webinars, uh, via our website under the free content. Okay, so let's look at the six-week study plan. So uh, today is the 15th. So um, you should be done with the third week. So, um, you know, you should have gone through all the uh, um, material which we have provided. You should have watched all the videos, uh, gone through the theory recaps. And by this time, you should be uh, done with mock number two. If not, it's high time you start attempting mocks because... Uh, um, I, I feel that uh, students, when uh, you know, if, if you are uh, by the third week, if you are not done with, if you are not started uh, doing uh, or attempting mock exams, you might be going through uh, the um, additional material which we had provided uh, too much. So, you know, don't uh, spend a lot of time on that. Instead, you have to uh, start working on mock exams. And uh, uh, from the fourth week up until the sixth week, uh, uh, things are extremely crucial because uh, from the from this week onwards, from uh, uh, the week which is starting from tomorrow onwards, you have to start attempting uh, uh, mock three, four, and five. Mock three in uh, week number four, uh, mock uh, four in week number five, and mock number five in week number six. Six, and on top of that, uh, when attempting these mock exams, use our exam platform then you can attempt all uh, mock exams under real exam conditions because it's of utmost importance that you uh, get yourself accustomed to um, what you would face at the real exam. So you need to sit in one place, attempt the entire mock at a stretch, allocate three, of, three hours of your time and attempt the entire mock at a stretch. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you had opted for the value pack or the value plus packages, then you'd have... Uh, uh, access to tutor support and um, after you get all your marks and after you watch the video where we are discussing the answer pertaining to mock three four and five you are supposed to work on your own develop answer plans based on suggested answers and if you're clueless about what answer plans are or what answer planning is about please watch webinar number three where i've highlighted what you need to do uh, with regards to developing answer plans so Things are getting serious now. You have um, something like three weeks to the exam, so or three to four weeks to the exam. So you need to be really uh, concerned about, uh, you know, attempting mock exams. Don't wait until the last two weeks to attempt mock exams. Instead, start doing it now itself. All right. So 
let's look at examiner's comments. So the examiner gives you certain tips and uh, it's better to adhere to these best practices uh, which are highlighted by the examiner. So when it comes to developing a good answer, what are you su supposed to achieve? Uh, so uh, try to achieve, uh, try to figure out whether your answer is relevant to the requirement. So uh, when I was uh, conducting the third webinar, answering technique, I highlighted this point. I said that you need to understand the exact requirement of the task. So as I've highlighted in uh, the third webinar, under one task, it might be divided into two or three separate parts. So you should be in a position to figure out whether uh, a certain subtask is uh, further subdivided into parts. If that is the case, for each and every subpart, you need to provide answers appropriately. So in order to do that, you need to understand the exact requirement. Okay. And if you understand the exact requirement, you'd end up providing extremely relevant uh, answers. You'd end up developing answer plans, which are um, uh, totally aligned with the requirements of the task. Then um, you'd end up providing relevant uh, answers. Okay. So relevance is looked at when providing marks. Relevance is looked at. And on top of that, especially since you are playing the role of a finance officer, especially you are, uh, um, you know, uh, doing the operational case study, technical knowledge is heavily tested. If you had already started attempting mock exams, you'd know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, practical application is extremely limited, but a lot of technical uh, knowledge is tested. So um, um, uh, that needs to be covered and application. In certain parts, application comes into the picture at the OCS level. There's not much of application tested. However, uh, for instance, if when 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 you are supposed to uh, um, uh, stipulate KPIs, key performance indicators, or, or when you are supposed to pro be involved with short-term decision making, you might have to make certain certain recommendations. So in such a context, application will come into the picture, but this is not heavily tested too much, but technical knowledge is extremely uh, important. You need to be conversant with the technical areas. And you are supposed to provide well-structured answers with good use of paragraphs. So I highlighted this point in webinar number three, answering technique. I stipulated that you are not supposed to provide single lined sentences when providing answers. You are not supposed to uh, answer in bullet points instead. For each and every answer point, you need to come up with a paragraph. And usually a paragraph is, is a three to four lined sentence. Okay, so this is not what I am saying. This is what the examiner is saying. Okay, so stick to our answer planning technique. Uh, just because you watch the webinar, the third webinar, it does not mean that you would be a champion in that area. Instead, when you are attempting all your five mock exams, you need to... Um, practice this answer planning technique or else you will not be in a position to uh, replicate the same at your real exam. Okay, so answer structuring is extremely important. So please practice on these areas. And uh, whenever you are bringing in uh, an argument, you need to justify it. You can simply state generalized facts or generalized information. You can come up with your own uh, um, uh, recommendations if uh, you can, but you need to back it up with appropriate levels of justification or else you will not get marks. So please be mindful about these things. Then um, some more tips uh, pertaining to what you are supposed to do. Uh, okay, before we move on to that area, a question had come through from Alex. What is actually meant by technical knowledge? So technical knowledge, what it means is uh, your knowledge pertaining to E1, P1 and F1 related areas. So Alex, if you had gone through our mocks, uh, you would see that, uh, um, you know, theoretical concepts are heavily tested, especially pertaining to P1 and F1 syllabus areas. Okay. So there's relevant costing coming in. So uh, it, whenever pro providing an answer for relevant costing, you need to know which of the costs are relevant which of the costs are irrelevant. So first things first, you need to highlight the theoretical component of it, where you uh, suggest uh, what makes certain costs relevant and what makes certain costs irre irrelevant. 
then you need to relate to the information provided as part of the reference material. Okay, so that's one part. If you are talking about activity-based costing, you need to know the theoretical concept behind it. You need to provide a definition and start uh, developing your answer. And if the question is about advantages and disadvantages of activity-based costing, again, that's a highly theoretical area. Your knowledge pertinent to theoretical content is tested. Okay, and if it's something to do with what-if analysis, again, theoretical knowledge is tested. There's not much of decision making involved at this level. There's not much of recommendations you'd have to make at this level. Okay, so uh, theoretical content is uh, extremely heavily tested. All right, so having said that, let's uh, move on to uh, uh, the examiner's comments. Uh, so the examiner wants you to do these things before the exam. So what are you supposed to do before the exam? You are supposed to study all areas of the syllabus. So um, I've seen so many uh, tutors out there saying that you can leave out certain, you know, syllabus content because that is not tested. You can't say that anything and everything which falls under the uh, operational level E1, P1 and F1 syllabuses can be tested. And, um, um, you know, although I can, if I'm being honest with you, I can say that E1 is not tested too much. Don't forget about E1 because certain parts could come. Okay, but P1 and F1, definitely the entire syllabus is going to uh, be tested. So you have to study all areas of the syllabus. And on top of that, you need to have the ability to apply to the scenario which is mentioned within the uh, question or as part of the question. Okay, so within the scenario, they'll highlight about a certain problem faced by the organization or a certain board member is asking for your opinion. So uh, additional information pertaining to that question is provided as part of reference material. So whenever you are developing an answer, you need to refer to the scenario highlighted. You need to refer to the information uh, which is provided as part of the reference material. So let's assume it's a, 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 the examiner throws a, a question, IA 16 property plant and equipment and F1 related area. So if it's a question pertaining to IA 16, definitely you'd get relevant information within the reference material. So you need to utilize the information provided in the reference material when developing your answer. Just because you give a highly theoretical answer, just because you highlight what IA 16 is about, what uh, the initial recognition criteria is, what is the subsequent measurement criteria, you know, although you write the theoretical uh, uh, components, if you do not relate to the information provided in the question or the reference material, you'd end up getting extremely low marks. Okay, so you need to always apply to the scenario, apply to the reference material, apply to information provided in the question when developing answers. Why? Because the examiner is trying to replicate a real life work environment. So it's as if your senior finance manager is sending you an email. And when you are working somewhere, if your senior finance manager sends you an email, you would try to cover all the information when providing your suggestion or recommendation. So that's exactly what you are supposed to do uh, at your exam as well. And uh, you are supposed to practice tasks. So th this is exactly why I said uh, there's absolutely no point of you having a a proper understanding, a high level of understanding about the pre-scene. Or uh, if you are conducting, a, uh, if you had conducted uh, extensive research pertaining to the industry or the financial statements of the company, all these things are good. But if you do not practice your mock exams, you won't pass uh, the OCS exam. Okay, so you have to practice tasks. I'm not suggesting this. This is the uh, CMA examiner who's suggesting uh, you to do this. Okay, so you have to adhere to these guidelines. You have to practice tasks and take time to type or write full answers. So what are full answers? I've, as I've re, uh, you know highlighted earlier, I've seen students, uh, you know, in a typical OCS exam, the the uh, exam is divided into four main tasks, 45 minutes each. So what students would do is they would do task number one today, uh, take a break, uh, do task number two on Monday, task number three on Tuesday. And likewise, that's not how you are supposed to practice your mocks. 
because at the real exam, you can't do it. You have to sit in one place and uh, attempt the entire mock at a stretch and uh, entire exam rather at a stretch. And on top of that, uh, if you had gone through the mock exams, you would have seen that there is a link between the tasks. So there's some type of linkage between tasks one, two, three, and four. So uh, in order to, um, you know, be accustomed to real life exam uh, conditions, you need to do full three hour mocks because that's exactly what the examiner is asking you to do. Type or write full answers. So when doing this, your life becomes easy because we are we have developed an exam platform which is akin to the Pearson VUE system. So all the technicalities are there. So you, when attempting your mock exams, you can attempt it under real exam conditions uh, rather than having to have uh, you having to you know type your answers on a word document or whatnot then you would have to keep track of time and there will be uh, uh, because when you are keeping track of time mostly people use a phone a mobile phone so you might get distracted so all these problems can be avoided when attempting all five mock exams within our exam platform because uh, you can get accustomed to real life exam conditions so that's why we had developed this platform so that uh, you can adhere to the best practices which are highlighted by the examiner. And uh, don't wait until the last moment, last two weeks, because, you know, let's assume you started preparing yourself for, or started uh, attempting mock exams just two weeks before the exam. You would be rushing yourself too much. There's absolutely nothing to gain from that because whenever you are doing a mock exam as i've highlighted earlier let's assume you do mock number three on a tuesday okay uh, on wednesday you are supposed to develop an answer plan or a short note based on the uh, suggested answer on thursday uh, you would get feedback if you had opted for tutor feedback so tuesday you attempt the mock wednesday you uh, develop a short note so you are going through the mock once more by Thursday you get feedback so by going through the feedback you can really figure out what's wrong or what, where you had gone wrong or where you need to uh, improve upon and uh, if you had opted for a plus package you would have access to the uh, recorded videos as well where I explain each and every task uh, thereby covering theory and on top of that application at the same time so after going through the video, you would further learn or, or, or um, uh, uh, concrete your uh, you would gain a concrete level of information or knowledge about what is highlighted in the suggested answer. And fri you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at uh, at your disposal where you can further improve yourself. If you feel that your answer planning is not up to standard, you can time yourself and uh, start developing answer plans. If you feel that your typing speed is not up to standard, then you can utilize uh, um, some time or allocate some time uh, towards uh, typing. Okay, if you feel that you uh, do not uh, uh, read, you are not in, you, you have not read the question appropriately, then you can focus on reading, okay? If you feel that you need to further, uh, uh, you know, um, polish up your knowledge pertaining to a P1, F1, or a, or a re E1 related syllabus area, then you can do it. So start attempting mocks right now. You can't do all these things. You can't go through the same uh, answer over and over again and improve your answers if you want to, if, if, if you plan about uh, attempting mock exams uh, within the last two weeks, okay, then you won't have time. You'd have to rush um, uh, attempting all five mock exams. Then you are not learning. You are not gaining anything from it. But if you stick to the plan which we have provided, it's as if you are going through the suggested answer thrice, attempting the mock exam. And after you had attempted the mock exam and, and, had, uh, and after you had gone through the suggested answer thrice, why am I saying that you are going through the suggested answer thrice? Because you are developing your own um, um, a short note based on your based on the suggested answer. So that's the first time. Second time, uh, you are watching the video where I'm explaining the answers. And the third time, you are going through the feedback 
based on the feedback you are comparing your answer you are supposed to compare your answer to the suggested answer or the short note which you have uh, developed so you are going through the suggested answer thrice then that's the best way to learn okay so rather, rather than waiting until the last moment uh, try to uh, practice uh, or attempt mock exams practice practice tasks right now okay Right. So what are you supposed to do during the exam? So during the exam, you're supposed to plan your answers appropriately. So this is where the answer planning technique comes handy. Uh, so I've highlighted this in webinar number three. So if you had missed out on it, please go through it. And if you want to polish up your understanding about these areas, please uh, uh, go through the go through that video. OK. And uh, you can't just just because you have a good understanding about how to plan the answers or how to develop answer plans you can't come up with an appropriate answer plan unless you practice it so that's exactly why i'm saying that that's exactly why i'm why i am reiterating that when attempting all five mock exams you need to practice this answer planning technique or else you will not be able to replicate the same methodology at your real exam okay so i want you to plan your answers or develop answer plans rather than simply you know reading the question and uh, typing the answer why am i suggesting it because the examiner is asking you to do it and uh, the examiner says that the marker is under strict instructions to mark answers on their merits so quality is picked over quantity so when developing your answer plans you need to first figure out how much marks are allocated. So based on the mark allocation, you can stipulate how many uh, points you need to have within your answer. Let's assume if 18 marks are allocated, then that suggests that uh, at least you need to have seven to nine points, seven to nine valid points within your answer. If that is the case, you need to have seven to nine paragraphs in your answer, okay? Uh, just because you provide lengthy answers, uh, you won't gain marks uh, because the examiner is specifically looking at quality over or picking quality over quantity. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do during the exam. You can achieve this. You can, um, because the marker is under strict instructions to mark answers on the merits, you can develop a high quality answer when you stick to a answer planning methodology or a answer planning technique okay so when you do that you are spending 25 minutes of your time to plan the answer read the question and plan the answer and once you had come up with an appropriate answer you move on to typing the answers so that's what we are supposed to do during the exam um, so let's try to figure out what the marking criteria looks like okay Two markers will allocate marks before the final mark is finalized. Yes, so your paper is going to be uh, marked or evaluated by two markers. Why are they doing it? So that uh, uh, they achieve a higher level of transparency. I've heard so many, in, in so many occasions, so, so much of occasions, I've heard students saying that uh, they are not too happy with the mark. They are asking me whether they can go for uh, remarking. That is not there in SEMA. Why? Because there are two markers who would allocate marks and uh, um, that's a highly transparent methodology which is adopted by most of the professional qualifications so bodies which offer professional qualifications. So two markers allocate marks before the final mark is finalized. Mark allocation for each subtask appears as a percentage under each requirement. Yes, you have seen that. I've shown you what this is about uh, when I was uh, um yeah you know um doing a, 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 a webinar number three answering technique so you are supposed to watch the recorded version of it to understand what i'm talking about in here if you are not too conversant with it and marks are allocated based on merit as i highlighted earlier the examiner picks quality over quantity right so we are moving on to the second part of tonight's webinar where I'm going to highlight about what you need to do with regards to developing confidence. Because uh, as per the CMA examiner, as I've highlighted earlier, um, students who have a positive mindset before the exam end up getting good marks at the real exam. Okay, So before the exam, what are you supposed to do to develop your confidence? 
stick to the study plan. We've made your life easier. We've highlighted all the tasks which you need to fulfill. And on top of that, um, um, you know, uh, if you stick to our study plan, you won't have to work really hard on a daily basis. Instead, you just need to work on a weekly basis. The hardest part comes when it comes to attempting the mock exam because you need to find three hours, sit in one place and attempt the entire mock, taking three hours of your time. Other than that, on the remaining days, you just need to allocate something like one hour or two hours of uh, study time. That's extremely easy because I'm not asking you to do it for the coming six months. Instead, I'm just asking you to uh, do it uh, in the coming three to four weeks. Okay, so on a weekly basis, you just need to allocate three hours to attempt the mock. Other than that, you simply need to allocate one hour or two hours of study time. So stick to the study plan because if you do it, you'd complete all work. As I highlighted earlier, you'd be going through the suggested answers thrice. Then uh, on a week by week basis, your conf confidence would develop because you know for a fact, I've done mock number three. I've gone through the suggested answer. I watched the video. I've sought feedback. I've compared my answer uh, to the uh, short note which I've de developed. Then you have done everything. You have gone through the suggested answer thrice. You have attempted the mock. What else are you supposed to do? Then you can forget about mock number three and focus on mock number four in the, um, um, in the next week. Same scenario, attempt mock number four, go through the suggested answer thrice, then you have nailed mock number four, then move on to mock number five. And just two or three days before the exam, you are going through the short notes, which were developed for all five mocks. So you have answer structures of all five mocks at your disposal without having to go through pages and pages of answers. You have a short note at your disposal. Okay, and uh, we are providing, we ourselves are providing uh, st uh, answer structures or answer plans for mocks three, four, and five. So you actually need not develop it. We are providing it. Okay, so in such a context, if you stick to the study plan, you are getting the job done. And on top of that, you are not stressed. You are doing it at your own pace. You are not allocating too much time for studies. So if you are not stressful, it's easy to develop confidence. So re, um, um, stick to the study plan. And if you are not too conversant about how to go about the study plan, refer to the video of webinar one study plan where we highlighted what we are supposed to do within the um, uh, six weeks leading up to the exam. And you can also refer to the study plan. I, I you know, highlighted what the study plan is and what we are supposed to do in the upcoming week. And stick to a routine. It's better to stick to a routine. You know, you can start the routine right now. Uh, waking up and sleeping appropriately. I know for a fact that closer to exams, uh, uh, you know, students uh, have a tendency of being up, uh, you know, until, until dawn. And, uh, you know, you don't sleep properly. You don't eat properly. You experience a lot of stress. Even, you know, as a student, I was like that until I finished uh, uh, the operational level, management level onwards, I totally changed my strategy. I was the most relaxed person uh, uh, who used to walk into an exam hall because uh, uh, when we were doing our exams, it was a paper-based scenario. We had to do it uh, in an exam hall. So, you know, um, I could see what the other students were going through. I was extremely relaxed because I stuck to a study plan because I did my homework way before the exam, actually speaking, um, two days before the exam, I stopped all work and I started to chill. Why? Because it helped me with uh, developing confidence. Okay. Why did I achieve it? Because I, I used to stick to a routine and this routine started four weeks before the exam, a month before the exam. I wake up at a certain time and I sleep at a certain time and I get proper six hours of continuous sleep, okay? Other students are not getting it because of that they are stressed, I'm not, okay? So I want you guys to stick to the same uh, scenario, same routine. If you're waking up at seven o'clock, do it on a regular basis. Then uh, if you're sleeping at maybe, let's say 12 o'clock, do it on a regular basis, stick to this routine then um, um uh, you'd find it extremely easy to wake up and sleep. And on top of that, if you're feeling that you cannot wake up at a certain time or sleep at a certain time, 
try to fix your um, breakfast lunch and dinner stick to a routine if you are having breakfast at uh, 8 a.m every day up until the exam have your breakfast at 8 a.m if you're having your dinner at 8 p.m on a daily basis you you have to stick to that routine then you would find it extremely easy to wake up on time and sleep uh, or fall asleep in the night as well and daily meal intake as i highlighted earlier it's extremely important that you um, stick to a routine with regards to your daily meal intake as well and what are you supposed to do uh, when practicing mocks, you are supposed to practice under simulated exam conditions. Why? Because the examiner wants you to do it. So if you are to practice under simulated exam conditions, use our mock exam platform, which is, as I highlighted earlier, akin to the Pearson VUE system. So it's uh, going to make your life extremely easy. And attempting mocks in isolation. If you are not using our exam platform, if you had gone for uh, the essential pack or the essential plus package, then you won't have access to the exam platform. Then you'd have to do it on your own. So if you are doing attempting mocks on your own, do it in isolation. Find a place where there aren't any disturbances. Keep away your phone and, uh, you know, focus on your work 100%. Um, okay, so attempt mocks in isolation. That's the best practice. And stick, stick into the exam technique routine where I, as I highlighted, you need to allocate 20 minutes to read and develop an answer plan and 25 minutes to type your answer. So if you attempt five mock exams, each mock exam has four main tasks. So uh, you'd be attempting 20 main tasks for, so you'd be developing 20 answer plans and you'd be typing uh, answers for 20 tasks. So in such a context, you are practicing the same me methodology over and over actually speaking you are practicing the same method 20 times that's enough for you to replicate the same at the real exam that's enough practice okay so you need to do these things if you are to uh you know get rid of undue stress and develop a, a positive level of confidence or a higher level of confidence before the exam then what are you supposed to do to maintain the same level of confidence on the day of the exam before the exam Rest your mind and body. Okay, so let me take you to the uh, six-week study plan. As you can see in here, the OCS exam window is from the 9th to the 11th of November. But uh, week number seven starts on the 6th of November. So 6th, 7th, and 8th, three days before the exam, you are not supposed to attempt any mock exams. Instead, you are just supposed to go through the... Uh, financial analysis, industry analysis, and top 10 issue slides, okay? Refer to the answer plans of all five mock exams because as I highlighted earlier, on a weekly basis, you are supposed to develop answer plans or, or, or answer summaries based on the suggested answers. So then you are going through all five mocks once more before the exam. Read the annotated pre in one last time. Watch the recorded video of OCS webinar for exam prep, which is what what's happening right now you are supposed to watch it just watch that video and stop all work a day prior to the exam sleep eat and rest well so just three days leading up to the exam what a typical student uh, does is they'd forget about sleeping they'd only be doing or attempting mock exams and when you try to cram a lot of knowledge nothing works out you will be extremely stressed and you'd you know bring the same level of stress to your exam hall as well you'd you'd be extremely stressed at your exam because of that uh, chances of failing the ocs exam uh, and uh, a time pressured exam such as the ocs exam is extremely high you won't be able to um, develop answer plans and type full answers instead you'd panic uh, you, you you won't be able to think straight why because just, uh, you know, uh, within the last week uh, leading up to the exam, you haven't slept well, you, you haven't uh, had your, um, um, you know, uh, food intake properly. And on top of that, you had tried to do too much because of that, um, you don't gain anything. Instead, according to our study plan, you are supposed to relax. Just watch some stuff, watch some videos, uh, go through some material, 
you are not attempting any mock exams you are so you are relaxing so that's exactly what i'm suggesting in here okay to maintain the same level of confidence rest your mind and body do not refer to any study material mocks or answer plans so i've seen uh, uh, students on the day of the exam trying to refer back to study material so students uh, there's a tendency for students to think that if you do not go do go through these things closer to the exam like the annotated pre scene the answer structures for uh, all the um, uh, mocks or any study material students think that uh, you might forget it that's not how it works okay it's in your brain if you had stuck to our study plan you have um, prepared yourself you had uh, gone through all these material uh, uh, in a stress free environment so there's a, uh, there's a high level of tendency for you to remember all these information so relax your body on the day of the exam, do not refer to any study material, mocks or answer plans. Actually speaking, as per our uh, study plan, you are supposed to stop work a day before your exam. So if you're uh, uh, taking up your exam on the 9th, you are supposed to stop all work by the 7th. 8th, you relax. 9th, you walk into the exam with an open mind. Okay. Think that you are the finance officer at fireworks. Because if you think that you are playing the role of a finance officer at fireworks, then at the exam, you'd also think that, um, 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 you know, I'm actually working at the office. I've received an email from the senior finance manager and I'm trying to give my best, best solution or best answer. That's it. Okay. Let go of any negativity. It's uh, usually, um, it's, it's actually uh, normal for you to feel bad on the day of the exam. Actually speaking, uh, uh, I used to throw up. Uh, on the day of the exam, uh, on a uh, 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 on a routine basis, I can remember that because that's you know stress uh, taking over me. But uh, let go of negativity uh, because you have done your homework. If you had done your homework, uh, you need not be uh, really upset on the day of the exam or too stressed on the day of the exam, and be open minded. Why the examiner is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment? So in a real life corporate environment, if you are supposed to do your job properly. You need to be open-minded as much as possible. You can't be stressed. If you're stressed, you can't do your job properly. So that's the same uh, philosophy which applies to your exam. And during the exam, what are you supposed to do? Stick to the exam technique routine. Don't try new things. Stick to the routine because that's what we have practiced. 20 minutes for reading and answer planning. 25 minutes should be allocated towards uh, typing the answers. And it's normal for you to feel stressed at the exam because... Uh, um, as you know, you'd be provided with four tasks. Out of the four tasks, definitely one is going to be extremely hard. Okay. You might get uh, a question on regression analysis. Most of the students find it extremely hard to provide high quality answers when it comes to regression analysis. Uh, or else uh, uh, you might get a question based on multi-product break-even. So multi-product BEP type of questions, most students find it extremely hard to provide the answers. So it's pretty normal. Out of the four tasks, one is going to be um, extremely hard. So in such a context, you would feel some stress. You will feel that you're going to fail the exam. If you go through some type of stress, first things first, drink some water. If it is allowed, because in certain contexts, uh, they do not allow you to, uh, uh, you know, bring a water bottle. If it is allowed, you know, take a water bottle, drink some water because it relaxes you. Okay. And on top of that, close your eyes and breathe slowly for about two minutes. If you feel that you, you cannot think straight or if you are experiencing brain freeze, what you need to do is close your eyes. Just focus on your breathing for two minutes. You are not wasting time. You are re regaining your consciousness. You have to be conscious about uh, what you are doing at the exam. If you feel that you are uh, not attuned with the situation, take a step back, focus on your breathing for about two minutes, then start uh, developing plan answer plans and start typing your answers again. Okay. Remind yourself that you have done your homework. So if you had stuck to the study plan, there's absolutely no point uh, for you to uh, um, be too stressed or, or unnecessarily stressed just because you are uh, uh, provided with a question which you cannot provide an answer. Remember that you just need 80 marks to pass. You are not supposed to get 150 out of 150. 
instead there will be uh, hard questions if there is one where you cannot provide an answer that's totally fine you can attempt the other tasks the remaining tasks why because you are just supposed to get 80 marks or 54 percent to pass okay so 46 percent uh, of your marks you can lose out still you can end up passing so just because you get a hard question definitely you are going to get a hard sub task or a hard task just because of that uh, because you uh, face something like that don't get demotivated stick to the routine be open-minded remind yourself that you have done your homework and all also remind yourself you you just need 80 to pass um and you can forget about the rest of the marks okay and give your best shot and be open-minded uh, because uh, you are playing the role of a finance officer who is working at a real office. So if you are to excel at doing your job, you need to be open-minded. And uh, before the exam, you need to avoid certain deflections. And what type of deflections are we looking at? Overemphasis over on uh, the exam blueprint. Don't go through the exam blueprint because I've highlighted all what is, uh, yeah, uh, 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 I've covered all the areas which are covered uh, within the exam blueprint. So there's absolutely no point of wasting your time uh, trying to go through it. Over-reliance on predictions. Yes, so most students rely on predictions. You can't predict anything um, uh, at your CMA exam, okay? Because as I highlighted earlier, as you saw uh, within what was highlighted within um, uh, today's webinar, the examiner says that anything can be tested. So uh, over-reliance on predictions or trying to uh, memorize your answers, that's not going to help you. Excessive industry analysis is a killer. I highlighted that point earlier because remember that you are playing the role of a finance officer who is at the lowest level of the organization. So you need not have a good understanding about what happens within the industry because you are involved with short-term decision-making. You are reporting to your finance manager. So as an individual who's involved with the day-to-day -day running of the company, as an individual who's involved with short-term decision-making, you won't, uh, the examiner won't expect you to have a good knowledge about the industry because the guys at the strategic level or the board members are supposed to have a good knowledge about the industry. Why? Because they are supposed to look at the industry and take decisions which affects the company in the long term. These guys at the strategic level or the board members are involved with long-term decision-making. They have to be attuned with what's happening within the industry. So when you are attempting the uh, strategic case study, you need to be really conversant with industry dynamics, but not at the operational level. So we've made your life easy just watch the industry out of the four pre seen analysis videos one is about industry analysis where i've highlighted the industry dynamics which uh, mentioned um, as part of the pre seen just watch that video that's enough and more knowledge about the industry you can also go through the industry analysis slides which we have provided okay um so in, in, in the industry, so this is pertaining to a previous uh, industry because I'm not going to share this uh, under this uh, free webinar, uh, the, the industry analysis slides which we have prepared for this time. So in the industry analysis slides, I've provided real life uh, industry dynamics pertaining to your chosen industry. So when going through these real life industry dynamics, don't try to memorize any of these things. This is done with the intention of highlighting how similar your pre-scene is to real life industry dynamics. So after going through this, uh, this set of slides, you'd know that similar information appears within your pre-scene. That's what you need to know. Other than that, you need not, so I've highlighted real life examples, uh, uh, two companies, I usually highlight two companies, okay? You need not relate to these two companies. You need not go through the we uh, websites of these two companies and really get to know what these two companies are up to. Instead, just go through the industry analysis slide, watch our industry analysis video, and on top of that, uh, I've uh, provided an annotated precinct. In the annotated precinct, all industry dynamics are highlighted in a precise and concise manner. Okay, that's all you need to do. You need not do 
um, any other type of industry analysis, excessive industry analysis is a killer because we have provided you with material. Just stick to that material. Don't try to do too much or else you'd be wasting your time. Misguided use of past papers. So I've seen students uh, referring to uh, past variants, okay, or past, past exam papers. That's not going to help you because if uh, a past variant was based on a company which is in the service sector, and if your pre scene is based on a company which is in the uh, uh, manufacturing sector, then the scenarios highlighted in the questions, the information provided in the questions, the knowledge tested in the questions are going to be totally different to what you would get at your real exam. So don't rely on past papers. Instead, you have to attempt mocks which are relevant to your pre scene. Okay. And information overload is a killer. So as I highlighted, about what students would do with industry analysis. Uh, you know, I've seen students uh, being bogged down with the financial statements too much. You need not do it because, again, we have provided a set of slides pertaining to the financial statements. You can see that uh, what we had written or what we had mentioned within the uh, slides are extremely concise and easily understandable. You need not memorize any of these things. You just need to go through these slides again because you are playing the role of a finance officer. So as a finance officer, although uh, you are supposed to know about the gearing ratios and whatnot, you are not going to, you know, uh, your, your knowledge pertaining to the gearing ratio is not going to be tested at the exam. Why? Decisions based on gearing ratios are uh, arrived at the strategic level, not at the operational level. So just go through these slides, set of slides. And based on this uh, set of slides, I've done a video out of the four pre scene analysis videos. The fourth video is uh, uh, about the financial analysis. So just watch that video. Then you would have all the necessary information about the financial performance of the company. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. Don't try to do too much. Information overload is a killer. By this time, um, what you are supposed to do is we have provided all the material. So just go through the material. Just watch videos. You need not do your own research. After doing all that, going through, after you have gone through the material which we have provided, you have to start attempting mocks right now. Okay? Or else you would be spending too much time on um, industry analysis, financial analysis, uh, pre scene analysis and whatnot. That is ex that's not necessary because we have provided videos. Just watch the videos, uh, go through the uh, information which we have provided. Don't be involved with excessive uh, financial analysis, industry analysis, or pre scene analysis. All right. Uh, a question came through. Thank you so much for your time. Valuable. Okay. Uh, welcome, um, Alex. And if uh, you might be attempting the exam at home because of the COVID-19 uh, regulation. So if that is the case, please go to this link and uh, read the content thoroughly before the exam because this gives you an indication about uh, the exam platform and what you'd, uh, uh, the, if, if you face a technical problem, what you're supposed to do and what not. Try out the CMA exam platform by following the guidelines mentioned. So get yourself accustomed to the exam platform. Although we had developed uh, an exam platform which is akin to the Pearson system, before uh, walking into the exam, just go through um, uh, or get accustomed to the Pearson system once, then it's going to be a walk in the park. So please do these things if you're attempting the exam at home. Having said that, uh, any questions, guys? So, you know, I've covered everything which I wanted to say. Any questions, guys? If you have any questions, you can switch on your mic and talk uh, or uh, jot it down on the chat section so that I can uh, address your concerns. So, let me take you through... Uh, the packages which we are offering. So uh, as I've highlighted earlier, we are offering four packages. So the first package is known as the essential pack. So if you are comfortable with 100% uh, self-learning, if you do not need any uh, tutor assistance, then you have you, you should go, uh, uh, you know, uh, opt for this package. 
uh, via this package, you would gain access to the record versions of the four webinars, five exams with suggested answers, uh, full pre-scene analysis videos, the four pre-scene analysis videos, the annotated pre-scene, industry analysis, financial analysis, and top 10 likely issue slides, as well as the case study uh, familiarization kit. That's priced at 99 pounds. And if you purchase now, and if you're planning on doing your exam in Feb, still you can use it until the 28th of February, 2023, okay? Then uh, the next package is known as the value pack. Uh, this should be chosen if you are looking for one-to-one -one tutor support. If you feel that uh, you need some type of mentoring, then please go for the value pack. So you would gain access uh, to all the material which are provided on the essential pack. On top of that, you would gain access to the online mock exam platform, which is akin to the Pearson VUE system. So when attempting all your five mock exams, you can do it within our exam platform, thereby getting accustomed to real life exam conditions. And we are providing professional marking and one-to-one -one tutor feedbacks uh, on uh, three mocks, mocks three, four, and five. We have highlighted that within the study plan as well. So if you opt for this, uh, 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 if, if you invest on the value pack, you would gain access to these services. And uh, this is the type of tutor feedback which we provide. So as you can see, um, other providers are not providing this type of feedback. Uh, I can vouch you for that. On uh, paragraph by paragraph basis, I've provided comments uh, pertaining to how you can improve your answers. I've uh, provided tips as to what you are supposed to do. And on top of that, at the very end of the document, we provide... Uh, mark uh, a mark breakdown where we uh, highlight uh, how you had uh, how much marks are allocated for each and every sub task and how much you have gained so you can actually uh, if, uh, you know ex improve your answers extremely if you provide uh, if you uh, uh, seek for our tutor feedback and on top of that uh, you would gain access to theory recaps pertaining to uh, OTQ syllabus content so that you can easily brush up your knowledge in these areas. So uh, this is priced at £199. And again, uh, uh, it will be available until the 28th of February. Um, there's another package called the Essential Plus package. So uh, what I highlighted or what I mentioned under the Essential Pack would come under the Essential Plus package. On top of that, you would get six plus hours of video lectures where I'm explaining the answers of mocks three, four, and five. If you feel that you need, you, you do not have an appropriate level of knowledge about theoretical content, then uh, watch these three videos. So in these three videos, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting the um, answers or I'm explaining the answers of mocks three, four, and five. And whilst explaining, I'm highlighting the theoretical content, thereby teaching theory. And on top of that, I'm looking into application. I'm also highlighting how you are supposed to or what you are supposed to do when it comes to applying your knowledge. So all these things are covered. Theory and application is covered under these videos. And if you feel that your application is not up to standard or if you feel that you need to brush up on your theoretical knowledge, then uh, go for the essential pack. Okay, that's priced at 175 pounds and there's a value plus package. So if you need the total uh, solution where you get access to the mock exam platform and uh, uh, you get tutor feedback, one-to-one -one tutor feedback, you get OTQ syllabus uh, uh, revision cards and on top of that, the mocks and all the additional material. And on top of that, the uh, videos will be provided for mocks three, four, and five, where I'll be highlighting theory and application based on the suggested answers, based on explaining the suggested answers of mocks three, three, four, and five. Um, so then, if that is the case, you need to go for the value plus package, which is uh, priced at two hundred seventy-five pounds. Uh, I need to tell you again that uh, all four. Uh, um, uh, packages are available until the 28th of February 2023. If you failed your exam last time or if you are coming through an exemption route, it is recommended to go for either the Essential Plus or the Value Plus packages. All right. Having said that, uh, let's look at whether there are any questions. Not sure if I missed it. What is the main difference between the essential plus and the value plus? Yeah, the main difference is uh, Natasha. Um, in the essential uh, um, plus and the value plus, you get the access to 
all the material which I've mentioned in here. But if let's assume you go for the essential plus package, you won't have access to the uh, online discussion, uh, sorry, uh, uh, online mock exam platform. You can't attempt all five mock exams uh, under real exam conditions via the platform. Platform access will not be there. And on top of that, you won't get one-to-one -one tutor feedback for mocks three, four, and five, and the theory recaps for OTQs will not be there. Other than that, everything else is there for uh, there under the essential plus package. All right. Okay. So seems like there aren't any questions. So because of that, I'm gonna end tonight's session. So uh, if you wanna contact us, uh, you can uh, you know contact us via our website or email us or simply WhatsApp us or follow us on any of our social media handles. And uh, we introduced TikTok recently. And while uh, um, our TikTok handle, we have summarized the entire pre-scene within six minutes. We have divided the entire pre-scene into three parts and based on that uh, developed uh, TikTok, three TikTok videos. And uh, the entire pre-scene is covered under six minutes. So on a daily basis, you can keep referring to these TikTok videos. Then you are reminding yourself about the most inf important information which you need to remember. Uh, that's going to be uh, extremely helpful uh, for you at the real exam. So, you know, follow us on TikTok. Uh, watch the three videos which we have uploaded. We have shared them on our WhatsApp group as well. So you can simply save them and uh, keep watching them on a daily basis. So having said that, thank you very much for joining uh, uh, this set of webinars. And if you missed out on any, please go see, you know, check out the recorded versions uh, under the free content and uh, all the uh, recorded versions are available under all our packages. So you can do that. So uh, all the very best. And if you have any question, please feel free to DM me or uh, drop a message on the WhatsApp group and the WhatsApp WhatsApp group will be active. I will be sharing some more content, some more free content uh, uh, via the WhatsApp group. So thank you very much. All the very best. See you and good night.